Hello, welcome everyone. Just waiting a moment for the stream to start. Welcome, this is the CX Chaos Excalibur versus Legend live stream on Al Alchemia Stories number one unofficial, unapproved, and uncontrolled podcast. Today we're going to go over the Chaos Excalibur and Legend jobs, comparing them, talking about their pros and cons, uh, which is best, their different builds and ways to build them, and uh, let's just jump right into it. So for the Chaos Excalibur, uh, let's talk about the pros and cons. Uh, the Chaos Excalibur can dual wield, and uh, about dual wielding is that it, although Chaos Excalibur has uh, it has uh, main weapon type, which is the one-handed sword, the Chaos Excalibur can also use any one-handed weapon type, like one-handed axes or the daggers as well. Because uh, the dual wield isn't restricted. Oh, hey, unknown. <laughs> the dual wield isn't restricted to uh, any particular one-handed weapon type. So you get uh, daggers, one-handed axes, and swords. Although Chaos Excalibur gets more damage from one-handed swords. Uh what this means is that um, since uh, you can use the axes, the daggers, or the swords, you have access to the Spirit Wars weapons of all four elements, which only um, uh, only uh, the only level 90 job that does this is Chaos Excalibur, since it has a dual wield. While uh, Assassin and Shaman also have the fire and water, so they have two different daggers. But to get to the wind axe and the soil swords, uh, Chaos Excalibur owns that right. So they could do the soil, or you can do fire, and you can also do water and get the special abilities. So why are spirit weapons so good? Because they have encha the enchanted element ability. Enchanted flood, enchanting blaze, enchanted storm, and for soil, the enchant quake. Now let me uh, show you what this is. So we're going to put on the wind build show you why this is good. So going into the boss Yome is just naked. So this ability gives extra damage. The ability of the Spirit Wars weapons. This is kind of the meta right now. So this one, this extra damage is actually from my uh, uh, earring accessory. Barrage earring, uh, you'll see in a moment, it'll proc here. There's the barrage earring right there. Increased number of attacks. See, now I hit twice. I hit twice, and then I also have this extra damage here. That's from the Spirit Wars weapon. As well as having uh, the earring, the LR earring, gives a weaker version of the Spirit Wars effect. But where Spirit Wars has a percentage to proc, this earring uh, is always on. Yeah, and I'll go more into detail into that. This is just the intro where I'm talking about the, the good things about the job. So the point was that the Chaos Excalibur can use all four elements of Spirit Wars weapon. Fire, water, wind, and the soil. 
where um, normally the Spirit Wars weapons, uh, a job usually only has one or two. Assassin and Shaman having two because there's two daggers of two different elements. But like Hero, Hero only has uh, fire. And Lancer only has fire. So, and then we look at the water. That's where we have the rod with enchant flood, as well as the dagger. There's also a shield in uh, water and soil. So let's look at the soil. You have the destroyer weapon. So destroyer only has soil. And then the one-handed sword. So paladin... Uh, Divine Knight, Chaos Excalibur, uh, one-handed sword classes. So you see there's restrictions except for the Chaos Excalibur getting all four. Gets all four element types. So this is how Chaos Excalibur uh, can ha exceed above other classes and have something that other classes can't do is that it can get the extra damage of every element. The other pros of Chaos Excalibur are that uh, it can do these element builds or it can do no element build. So it also has uh, Halo Sword, Darkness Sword, Shining Heaven Sword, and these two which give uh, extra damage uh, built into the skill. So it can do non-element uh, and hit like Fafnir and stuff with these skills. Bosses that don't have an element. And uh, you can also build it free to play. You, so that's a pro because these Spirit Wars weapons you can craft on free to play. Now let's talk about the cons of Chaos Excalibur. The top builds are the most expensive because of things like... Uh, these earrings that are LR expensive and they uh, they boost up they give the synergy to these because it's the same thing as a spirit wars weapon and then also the snow magic armor if you're building four sets of snow wind armor or snow magic to have uh, every element a set of every element that's 12 pieces of maxed armor, so that can be expensive. So the top end of Chaos Excalibur, to max it, is very expensive. Just a second, I gotta turn on the technical stuff here on YouTube. Let me make sure everything's running and do a sound check. Okay. Sound check, testing. Okay, sounds like we're good. Okay, so getting back to the discussion. Just a second, let me upload some uh, metadata. Okay, we're good. All right, so. The cons is that the top end of CX is very expensive with these uh, LR accessories and the snow magic. But it's also possible to do free to play with these Spirit Wars builds. And then uh, another expensive thing is that um, if you wanted to take it to like fully to end game, you'd need the snow magic and then you'd also need some Dasha gear like uh, destroyer stuff because uh, you'd need something gear that works with Dasha uh, and one more thing is that the, the um, class weapon of uh, Chaos Excalibur has lower stats and uh, since it's built into magic as well the attack is a little low although one-handed axes have a decent attack stat 
But if you're uh, if you're going full elemental, the attack stat isn't as important as the element attack. Okay, so next we're going to talk about LG and uh, Legend's pros and cons. A Legend has uh, the best free-to-play, casual, or new player numbers for DPS, the highest numbers. If you're free to play, casual, or a newer player, uh, it'll be the top DPS in those situations. And uh, an LG doesn't need any support to go off. For example, you're in basement and don't have a Yome, or you're in random groups and you don't know who else is going to be there. You can go in with an LG and you'll have high damage most of the time. There's... If there's like a bunch of healers, you might have a problem. But usually it's doesn't need any support and can even solo many basement floors uh, relatively easy compared to other jobs. Like um, if you wanted to solo B1 with Paladin or uh, Divine Knight, I mean, it'd be much easier to take a Legend faster, easier to gear, um... Although a little bit more risk, but that's really negligible since you could just uh, use single target attacks or do whatever. Uh, now about the cons for Legend, because there are some very strong cons. I think I missed a chat here. Let's see what they're saying. So unknown... Uh, is saying about legend it would be better to use LRAW as a main or Nova Usia. Exactly, yeah. I use the the grit divider because it gives the fifty percent damage for ten seconds. Or on shorter battles where it's not likely that I'll have time for that to proc, I'll use the ten percent damage of Usia, which is always up. So which one I use depends on the percentage the number of hits I'll do, because this is only 10% chance. So if I'm going to hit like five times and I need the power, I'll use this. If I'm not going to hit five times like farming hell and just killing it with a calamity and a falx, I'll use this. So, and then there's other stuff like uh, special boss weapons and uh, the fire. So you can go a full fire build. But uh, getting back on topic here. The cons for Legend. Getting a feel for the reverse damage potencies. Or in other words, just mastering the class. Uh, it has a higher learning curve. It's more difficult to master and comes with increased risk and higher revive cost for gems. For you and your party. So... You can kill yourself, unlike with CX where it's safer. Especially with like Last Resort, where you can do 60% self damage. If you're ready to go off with a level 3 Last Resort, and you're not coordinated with your healer, or your self heals here, to be at 60% health, you just killed yourself with your ultimate. So you... It's more difficult to learn. But, uh, you know, hard things are more rewarding. So, it is very powerful. Very powerful DPS. Uh, the Legend's other cons are that it also needs coordination with healers to function at maximum efficiency. And can be a problem with random groups, like running in here and there's a bunch of healers in this event boss. And uh, parties with squishy people. So if if you're the strong legend in the party and your defense is very good, but there's someone squishy that's new, which frequently happens with basement, is that there'll be one squishy person. The healer's going to be healing them and overhealing them. And you're not going to be able to get down at low HP how LG functions. So... Just random parties with lots of healers or uh, parting with someone that's not at your gear level, that's below your gear level, causes you 
to lose efficiency uh, unless you have the proper gear, which is uh, Devotion LR Earring and Nussie Armor and Strike Earring for free to play. Now, moving on, uh, we've got two S tier DPS that perform very well. But which is the best? Now, both have ways around DUL. Damage upper limit restricts you. The damage upper limit. I can't do more than that. More than my damage upper limit. Without using paid stuff like uh, armor. But these two S tier classes, of course, being S tier, they have ways around the, the DUL. The Chaos Excalibur by using these abilities, enchanted abilities, with the Spirit Wars weapons. And uh, the Legend, by scaling its DUL with its HP, and also Excess and Last Resort. So let's take a look at those real quick. So you got Average, which scales off remaining HP very greatly to millions which uh, made it as a tier 2 as powerful as a tier 3 DPS and last resort which has incredible potencies very high potencies LG is hero and LG is the developers gift to players as a farming job like staff and Torum and it's uh, it's them saying like here have this. If you're free to play, you can compete with this. Here's Hero, here's Legend. It scales off HP to get DUL. And we're going to give it incredibly powerful potencies so that even new players can, or new casual or free to play, can compete with stuff like a Whale CX that spends a lot of money. And you can trade skill and hard work to compete with those overpowered whale jobs. So that's where LG shines. And uh, let's go and talk about the builds. So we talked a lot about the element build, but there's also a non-element build, if I have it in here, for uh, Chaos Excalibur. Actually, I don't know if I have it in here. <laughs> here it is. So if I'm going into Fafnir... I have the Fafnir weapon. Fafnir doesn't use damage up or limit, so I'm not really worried about cheesing it with extra damage. As well as Fafnir is not elemental, so I'm using the Fafnir special effects stuff. And the skills. You can use Eclipse Sword to get a buff that boosts attack. Heretic Dance for filler. But what you're doing is you're casting Darkness Sword. To get uh, multiple hits and Shining Heaven Sword. Uh, actually, I think uh, I'm not sure about the particulars. CX isn't my main, but it increases damage up or limit, and I think it also boosts one other thing. So, uh, ask a CX expert. But you cast these two into Elysium, and then you can cast these again and finish with the Halo Sword as a finisher. So. That's how the um, non-element uh, CX works. And it can use these assassin dual wield skills, heretic dance, and the wind version, torture waltz. Now let's get into the element stacking CX. So this is the build. This is the main highlight is the... Uh, the CX that does elements. So what we've got is green core armor, the LR accessory that also uh, gives the effects of the Spirit Wars weapons, uh, element attack increasing stuff, as well as the snow magic if you have the right element for it. And then on the sub gear, we're not using one handed swords. We're just using whatever is our best wind. So we're stacking up wind, wind katanas, 
with their 300 wind attack even when they're not awakened. Awaken Spirit Wars weapons because they give the 300 wind attack. And then the Akasha sub with the element attack Akasha ability subgroup. So we've got the 3,700 wind attack. So we've stacked that up. And that's how we get these extra damage. See, Wind Ridge, 1 million, but 2 million extra damage. That's what I'm talking about, S-tier DPS and ways around DOL. Although my DOL was restricted, my extra damage does not use the DOL. So instead of DOL, we're using this element attack and jacking it up super high to just ignore damage upper limit regular hit with our uh hit but trying to hit into the wind attack coupled with the spirit wars enchanted ability that's how this works the wind attack high and then going off the enchanted ability to get this high extra damage um besides the weapon Let's talk about the main methods. So you've already seen this LR ability. This LR accessory is an expensive way that gives extra damage all the time. It's less than the it's less than the enchanted storm ability, but it also gives a huge amount of wind attack. It gives a flat rate and then also has a percentage modifier of your base. And the base is like this this here, this number, and not counting the cores and other erroneous things, like uh, other equipments. So it's more off of your, uh, your base is more like what's attached to your gear at this point. So that's how the modifier for this works flat rate plus the base multiplied that's getting kind of mathy so i'm going to go to the next point and then also the snow magic armor so snow magic armor is a uh, top tier armor if it's maxed it's the best thing for these element builds it's the best armor because it's going to give you more of the uh, attack that you want. I don't know how much a lot. <laughs> I'm not an expert on it. See, it says 10 here, but it's giving 14. It also has modifiers, and all this is, although this is uh, the wrong element, so you're only seeing a little bit. But if it was the right element and maxed and had all three, it'd be huge, as well as giving uh, damage upper limit. Although that doesn't show here, it'll give the damage upper limit. So it's very overpowered, giving the element attack and damage upper limit based on that. And that the modifiers all synergize. Now, that's the expensive way, is the LR and the snow magic. But there's also a free-to-play method, and that's stacking these up, the Spirit Wars weapons. That's the free-to-play method. So putting them on the main hand and the off hand, and then also having the Spirit Wars weapons with the 300 as opposed to 200 of regular weapons. See, this has 200 wind attack, but the Spirit Wars, the katanas, and the bow. But now one more thing is when the Spirit Wars weapons are not awakened... Except for the katana. The katana always has 300. But if it's not awakened, it still only has the 200. And it does not have the enchant ability. So you're going to need access to awaken them, which is Spirit Wars Hell, which requires 3,000 magic defense. Or I think for fire and soil, you need 3,000 defense. So you're going to need 3,000 stats. So if you're not at 3,000 stats and you're not spending money, 
LG is going to be better. Because uh, you're not going to have access to these builds even as a free-to-play if you're not doing hell yet. Okay, so there's one more build. There's one more build I want to talk about besides the combo non-elemental build. The element stacking build. The third one I want to talk about is... Uh, I'm sure I have it in here. That's the, uh, yeah, so physical and magic attack. So CX has a good attack, and it also has decent magic attack. And the weapons, dagger and one-handed sword, have good magic attack. Although the one-handed axe, comparatively, do not relative to the sword and dagger. But you can get your magic attack up high. Cruel officer gear and uh, similar things boost magic attack and physical attack. And the class stats or the class skills of CX like Darkness Sword, Shining Heaven Sword, um, Halo Sword. Uh, and the tier 2 skills, they're all magic. You see, it converts it to magic attack, converts it to magic attack, converts it to magic attack. For purposes of hitting a boss, like, for example, B6, this is magic, this is magic, this is magic. And then you also have Heretic Dance and Torture Waltz, and all the physical skills, as well as these two are the best of your physical kit. So you have an overpowered double hitting physical kit as well as super powerful magic kit that allows uh, CX to easily do hybrid magic attack and physical attack, which is a lot like the bow class. The bow classes also has good magic attack as well as a spear. Spear has good magic attack. So, but CX has this uh, overpowered double hits as well as that combines with its class magic skills. So it's it's a very good hybrid attack magic attacker. Um, so that's the three builds. Main builds is combo, element, and hybrid. So going into legend... I'm going to talk about two ways to build it. Although there's there's many ways to do all of them. And you can be unique. But uh, Legend has a main build for endgame rating as a DPS. And that's actually going to be defensive. Because of the way that it works off the potencies of low HP. You have to compensate for having lower HP than everyone by having higher defense than everyone. So getting your element resist, trying to max that up to 100 on your Akashic ability subgroup. And then also, you see this element attack, I will change to defense, magic defense. But I'm just, I'm trying to max element resist first by forcing uh, rolls into it by having something in the similar ability subgroup. That's, I talk more about that in my... Uh, um, Akashic walk through part six, uh, forcing rolls through uh, uh, having similar ability subgroups next to each other. Uh, check that out if you want to see about that. But on topic, you're getting your defenses up high. You're getting your runes on your armor. Very defensive. Trying to get your defensive build of your... Uh, LG, you know, stacking defense, magic defense, and elemental defense as high as possible, making yourself turtly because the lower HP and the more defense you have, the more damage potential you have, the safer you are, and the more you counter your risk, which is the biggest con, and you overcome your weakness as a legend, and the more you can compete with the uh, 
compete and exceed the paid players. Uh, another way um, to build legend, besides as a main defense for end game, as a defensive build, an alternate would be as a glass cannon or a secondary farming job, going with full attack and either full attack or balanced attack and defense. Perhaps this is less viable at end game than a full defensive build depending on how you're geared but it's always a good idea in fact uh, from the start of the game you should be having hero and legend as a secondary farming job and uh, if it's just going to be a really a secondary job and you're not going to take it into end game raids going glass cannon is a possible build for you or if you're super pro and you like to live dangerously, you can go glass cannon on endgame raids and do things like uh, timing your excites perfectly or being in voice chat with the healer. I think voice having a voice chat with the healer is the, an excellent way to run a glass cannon legend at endgame. So there's other ways to build Legend, like as a main tank that also DPSs, or just a self-healing tank. But I don't think we really have uh, bosses that need that yet, except maybe like Dilithereo in a special situation because of the poison. But um, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say that there's lots of ways to build the thing. Uh, now let's go into the conclusion about this. And talk about CX versus Legend. When it's good, when you want to pick this class, when you want to pick that class. So, when do you want Chaos Excalibur? When is it good compared to Legend? Against single element bosses? Like, uh... Bosses that only have one element, or where there's only one boss, unlike B5, where there's two elements. So that you can focus on the one element with your snow magic, with your spirit wars weapon, with your LR, and set to stacking a single element. That's where CX is going to be good compared to LG. Or if you're a paid player, and you can have all the best stuff... That's when CX is going to be good compared to LG, relatively, because uh, CX has a very high top end, a high optimization with all the good stuff you can get of uh, the green storm earring and such, and the snow magic. Um, or uh, CX will also be good compared to LG in random groups or with volatile healing needs due to squish people. Like I'm talking about um, when you get overhealed because there's just a lot of healers, or there's a squish person that's making your legend be overhealed, then you might switch to CX so that you could have consistent damage. Now let's talk about when legend is good compared to CX. And that's... Before access to Spirit Wars, before you can get the Spirit Wars weapons, if you don't have 3,000 magic defense defense, your LG is going to be better because you're not even going to have the Awakened uh, stat of 300 and not have the Awakened ability to do the extra damage that CX abuses to get around DUL. So if you don't have 3,000 stats yet, you should be probably using LG uh, to farm, or whatever class you like. Uh, it, that's more like when CX is not entering into its free-to-play zone, is before you have 3,000 defense or magic defense. So if you're lower budget, or a free-to-play legend better, and also if you're solo... If you're a solo player, LG is pretty good because you don't have to worry about the problems with he getting overhealed. And uh, 
LG's solo kit is uh, incredible because it has Ascension, Excite, and also a third skill, Levy, three skills that heal. Uh, got a chat from Dustin Watkins who says I don't understand runes. So we're going to we're going to go show the runes real quick cuz uh this that's actually the end of the analysis of the comparison. So let's talk about runes for Dustin here. So you're going to get um low rune potions. You'll get low rune potions from events and as you play and if you're new, don't use the low rune potions on weapons. What you need to do is spend these rune potions. So get, get here to Sumina. This is where you use them. In the rune menu, rune carving sets runes. So you can, you can roll runes. You can set runes on things. But open rune space is where you use the rune potions. So don't use it on the weapon. Use these potions on your armors. So shields or just uh, re regular armor. You want to get, um, if you're new, you want to get a good set of fire armor. And you want to open up these. So you get, uh, look, here's, here's a fire armor with a good blue defensive core. So you want to, you want to use your rune potions on these fire armors, because that's going to help you get to Fafnir, which is going to be, uh, your first hard raid after basement. So if you're just learning runes, get your fire armor and use your low rune, rune potions on those. So roll, roll the rune potion on it. Open it up. So we had a success, so we opened up a rune slot. See, it's blank now. And then we're going to go into that thing. And we don't, we don't have anything to do it with, so we go to deck here. And we do rune exchange. And we take... Uh, the head because we just rolled the head so we get the head one and I'll show you how to craft these as well so we get that take our uh, thing we just bought this from deck and we're gonna roll a rune onto it so we got magic defense now how do you get these is your gear let me see if I have something I can. Uh, I like all my stuff. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to crystallize it, but I'll. I'll make something. So I'll show you. You take uh, cotton. This is important information. This is in um, my new player guide part three in detail. New players guide part three, where I explain this whole process. So go there uh, for more details. So we take the cotton. Which can be farmed from red konomis. So you farm red konomis for cotton. You make a briefs. Runes. Crystallization. Crystallize. Now we get the pure crystal bottoms. Which is what we gave to deck. To get the item to roll the rune. Which was the bottoms. That was for bottoms, since briefs is a bottoms. And then we can buy one of these. And that lets us roll the thing. Roll, roll into it. So, oh, I did that wrong. Way at the bottom. You're welcome. Uh, Dustin Watkins says thanks. Yeah, and so then we can roll into that with that one we bought that we made with the cotton plant that we crafted into briefs, 
gave to deck and then used the the low rune pot to open the slots and there's another way besides the briefs so i'm going to show you real quick with the briefs you can get bottoms and there's a way to farm the helmets for free so there's two spots so these bosses appear that drop the items that crystallize for helmets and that's Garami Papa as well as the fishing bosses so Garami Papa appears here and always drops a head that you can crystallize there's also one on wide range plane so we're going to check that spot out too. So that was the spot for one Papa. And then there's another one down here. So you can check these. They spawn randomly every 30 minutes. So you just check every 30 minutes for them. And then there's a Papa that spawns right here. And those give you the items for helmet crystallization for runes. Uh, I haven't yet found a farmable one for tops. Um, you might be able to craft something. Let's try this. Let's try state upper. Let's see if that works. Oh, that's kind of expensive at three cotton. But let's see if it works. Because then you could get top helmet and bottom. And you want to max out all five slots and then stack up defense and magic defense primarily so yeah we can't do that but the briefs that that didn't crystallize this one the stay upper didn't work but the briefs works I don't think any of these will work but the briefs the briefs definitely work the briefs and maybe any maybe any two star works Okay, and Dustin asking, Hey bro, I know you're doing a video on different things, but I was wondering, how do you open up slots for weapons? I can usually max out five slots for weapons. So, the what we were just talking about, runes, was in my new player's guide part three. But for opening up slots, you'll want to go to new player's guide part one. And we're going to show that right now. So, after you beat main quest about 80 you're gonna have this guy and he's gonna be your first access to cores and uh, so you buy these cores that you put them in but the master drill box is what opens it up so you buy the master drill box open it up it's a red one see the R that's red so now we can go to Yome gear build up and instead of set core we go to open slot to use that thing we just got from this guy and now we can open up a red so we're gonna find one summer rush top and this this is the thing we just got and now see it opened where these these, uh, you get them from events too, but this is going to be like your first chance to farm them is from this guy in the Dawn Coins. And the way you get Dawn Coins is you take your uh, Tier 2 Hero Job, which is uh, the Tier 1 Duelist, take it to Hero, get this Dauntless skill, which is pretty fast to get, get Dauntless set dauntless so get your hero raise it up as high as you can but uh 70 is best and later you'll have the tier two and i'm i'm still farming with the same job here and then uh set these skills like partisan chaser sacred circle outlaw rondo any skill that's all and physical so all physical skills so you'll also have shaker heat haze and ground shot and then falks and calamity once you're higher level and now i don't need dauntless 
but as a new player, you're going to need it. It's going to be why you're doing this class. And Dauntless, it's the most powerful skill in the game. It scales your attack up, but what it doesn't say here, attack up, is that it's huge, huge, huge attack up because it scales off your HP here. So it's just bigger and better and faster, and it will save you months of time. For example, I was a main magic user, and I'd been playing the game for a year already, farming up in here to get these dawn coins to open the cores to get the drills from that merchant and uh farming up here uh as soon as the hero class was released and i had this dauntless skill i went up about two or three times farther than my main job that was all fully geared uh, i went way farther with a fresh dauntless skill that was ungeared. So this, this is the skill you want. It'll be better than your main job. And that's why I'm talking about hero and legend as a secondary farming job. Because with this skill, it's going to be better than the thing you already have with no work on it. And I, I go more into detail into that on my uh, new player guard part one. And show how even a naked hero with a two star weapon and no equipment, no subs, no anything... Uh, it's just way more damage with this Dauntless skill. So take Dauntless, head up these stairs here, once you're at the uh, main quest 80, 90-ish. And then you can start buying these uh, drill boxes for uh, Dawn coins. And you should be doing this every week. This is a weekly progression. Go as high as you can, get as many Dawn coins as you can, buy the the drill boxes and then get these level 8 cores for 100 dawn coins until you have all level 8 after a few months and then you can start getting the level 9s and uh, the drill boxes and then you're also going to want to automatically get these tinctures too and I'll, the, lo the low rune potions for armor are here to open up armor slots it's just this is your weekly progression here as well as down here, see that's the dawn coin, and down here is the party mode. This is solo, this is party stuff, and this party stuff is birth, root, stem. And that's only on weekly reset. People come down here, there's hundreds of people on Sunday morning, or uh, might be Monday on your time zone. And uh, you'll want to come here once a week on the reset. And you'll, you'll see hundreds of people in here uh, farming down here in the party mode. But this is Dawn Coin. This is the, the birth root stem downstairs. Birth root stem downstairs. Dawn upstairs. So that's how you're going to get your open slots for all these things. Going to get them opened up so you can put cores in them. And also where you're going to buy cores. Besides uh, things like the event the current event which is a slower way to farm them a more casual way all right so uh i hope that answers your question um let me give you a link to those on the live chat so i've got the here's the part three I'm posting on the live chat, and that's for runes. And then I'm going to post the part one, which is for this Dawn coin farming. So there's in the live chat posted there. Okay. And that's it for that. Uh, let me let me post the playlist into the description for this video in case you can't get the um in case you can't get the live chat cuz YouTube's dumb and has problems cuz I'm using this omelet program so they sometimes they have problems with posting the live chat there so just a moment and I'll post that 
thanks everybody. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, just leave a comment down below. Okay, new players guide playlist. Putting that in the com in the description, so that's there in the description too for later. All right, thanks everybody uh, for watching, and uh, hope that clears up some info about uh, Chaos Excalibur and how it works with the elements, as well as if it's better than Legend or when to use them. So uh, have a great weekend. Bye, everybody, and happy reset.